it is important, very important, to speak about the name of Elohim. Among Karaites, this is, this is a mixed bag. There are many Karaites who use the name, and there are also many Karaites who do not use the name, but use one of the many titles given to Elohim. Now, if you're someone who is very fixed on keeping the titles for Elohim, to ban the name of Elohim and use a title, you're free to do that. Nobody's stopping you. Don't watch this video. It's not for you. But for those of you in the Karai community or those who are learning, who want the truth based on Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, which is the foundation of Karaism in its own decrees, that the Tanakh is the only authority, not tradition, not man, but Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures. Then this video, I hope, will be very helpful in giving you confidence to know that what you have been taught in the Hebrew Scriptures or are being taught from the Hebrew Scriptures is correct. If it's clear. Okay. The name of Elohim. The most controversial of all subjects without question. Very controversial. Saying the name instead of the titles like Adonai or Hashem is very controversial among the Jewish people. No question. Even among Karaites. I myself based on years of study into this, have no question that the name of Elohim must be used, it must never be replaced by titles, even if they're beautiful titles. These are not names. So I'm going to clarify this up with any Karaites, whether in leadership positions or not. Hashem, Adonai, and all the other titles are titles. Those are not names. They are not names. Period. Those are titles. So the phrase that many, even among the Jewish people, throw around. God has many names. Just like the Christians do. God has many names. No, he does not. He does not have many names. He has one name that he gave to all of Israel as his personal name. It is not to represent his qualities. It is not a description alone. It is his name. As he shows in Shemot, in Exodus chapter 3. He tells Moses, This is my name forever, and my mention, Zecher in Hebrew, for all generations. The first commandment. He introduces himself to the entire nation of Israel and says, Hello! Does he say, Adonai, I am Adonai your God, I am Hashem your God? No. He tells three million people, I am, and he says the name, your God. So, we will see by the end of this video, it'll be your choice. Are you going to follow the words of Elohim, or are you going to stick with tradition? You have to make that choice. That's your choice. So, to my Karak brothers, some of you will agree, some of you will not. That's for you to decide. When we hear either Rabbanite, our brothers, or Karite brothers, or anyone using the words Hashem, the name, or excuse me, the title Hashem, or Adonai, um, we hear that a lot. It literally means the name. Hashem means Ha, means the, Shem means name. Adonai is like saying the Lord or Master. Coincidentally, the same terminology is used for the name Baal, which means Master or Husband. Baal. This is one of the many reasons why I never pronounce, when I see it in Tanakh, I'll never pronounce it as the Lord because that's not what it says there. There's no difference in calling him Baal. And we will see by Scripture, even in Tanakh, Elohim gets extremely upset. He says, if you will not teach my people to swear my, by my name, as they swore by Baal, the Lord, or Master, or Husband. So he's really upset about this situation long ago. That they were not swearing by his name, not using his name. 
pronouncing his name as the only Elohim and no other. So let's go to the history. Where did this band come from? If you look, this is something that you really need to look into yourselves. I can't do all the homework for you. You will find when you do your research that the starting of the ban on the name began when Roman persecution was against the Jewish people, banning them from using the name of Elohim in their worship or their services or prayers or declarations. And even in the Talmud, it speaks about rabbis being killed. Yes, Orthodox Jews, Jewish rabbis, were using the name. Even in the Talmud, it says that at one time, it says you must, you must greet your fellow man using the name, the divine name. So even in the past, it was very clear that the name was not banned long ago. Now, after this Roman persecution, the Roman persecution had ended, and then it basically turned into tradition, something we don't have to bring back. Let's just keep calling him Adonai or Hashem. Eventually, it became somewhat of a superstition where it actually says in the Talmud, anyone who pronounces the name as it is written, meaning Yehoah, has no place in the world to come. Now this is not in Tanakh. This is the decree. Now, I want to make this statement before we go further, really fast. I am not saying that using the name of Elohim must not be taken serious. It is very, very serious. I want those of you who are new to this to listen up very carefully. The only unpardonable, unforgivable sin in the entire Tanakh is pronouncing the name of Elohim in blasphemy or misusing his name or disrespecting, disrespecting it, misusing it. You must be very careful in how you use it. It must only be used for, for example, teaching, or your own prayers, things of holiness. It must never be used to desecrate his name. I want to make that very clear. There's only one unforgivable sin in Torah. Using the name of Elohim in a worthless way. So, you must be very careful, because there is no forgiveness if you disrespect his name. So be very careful in how you use it. I just want to make that very clear. I'm not saying to wave it around like a banner and make bumper stickers and none of that. You must be very careful because it is the holiest name and the only unforgivable sin in the entire Tanakh. There is no forgiveness. So be very careful. That is only for holy purposes. Nothing in Tanakh prohibits a person from pronouncing the name of Elohim. Indeed, it is evident from Scripture that Elohim's name was pronounced routinely. Many common Hebrew names contain Yah or Yahu, part of Elohim's four-consonant name. The name was pronounced as part of daily services in the temple. This is a fact. The Mishnah confirms that there was no prohibition against pronouncing the name in ancient times, like I said before. In fact, the Mishnah recommends using God's name as a routine greeting to a fellow Jew. Now, where can you find this? This is in Berachot, chapter 9, verse 5. However, by the time of the Talmud, when it was written down, it was the custom to use substitute uh, titles for Elohim. Some rabbis asserted that a person who pronounces the name as to his letters, instead of using the substitutes, had no place in the world to come and should be put to death. Instead of pronouncing the four-letter consonants, as it's written, they would use Adonai or Hashem. Many Karaites do this as well. Although the prohibition on pronunciation applies only to the four-letter name, Jews customarily do not pronounce any of Elohim's many titles, except in prayer or study. The usual practice is to substitute letters or syllables so that Adonai becomes Adoshem or Hashem, 
Eloheinu and Elohim become Eloheinu, Elokeinu, excuse me, and Elohim instead of Elohim. So they're even careful now and in the past as well with even the titles being cautious. Now, there is a myth that has been going around for centuries that I'm going to debunk right now, forever and a day. The name was never, ever lost. Get that out of your head. Any scholar that you're reading that says that the name was lost and nobody knows for sure what the name is, is completely out of his element and is not telling the truth. The name has always been known, always, among Orthodox Elite, Karaites, and Samaritans as well. And they all agree to one name. One. Now there are some who are not as knowledge that do not know this name or have never got into this subject because of the uh, controversy surrounding it. So they just don't know. So they come up with their own version of the name if they do want to bring it in. There is one name and one name alone. It was never lost. And you can actually find the secret of this name in one of my videos. I talk about it in Exodus chapter 3, the burning bush, where Moshe asks Elohim, if the children of Israel ask me, what is your name? What shall I say to him or say to them? And Elohim responds by saying, Ehiyeh, Asher, Ehiyeh, which means I will be what I will be. Now, People miss this all the time. Why is he saying, Ehiyeh, Asher, Ehiyeh? Because he's trying to tell you something. He is trying to tell you. This is a clue to how to pronounce his name properly. I will be what I will be. Ehiyeh, Asher, Ehiyeh. Now, the name that is known, at least for the most part, for those who are knowledgeable in the Karite community, Orthodoxy, or Samaritans, there is one name. That could be pronounced one of two ways. I choose to pronounce with a W because that would have been the original pronunciation, Yehovah. It could be also pronounced Yehovah. But the meaning of the name is so significant with the phrase that he told Moshe first, I will be what I will be. Ehiyeh, asher ehiyeh. Now, the meaning of Yehovah or Yehovah has three root words in Hebrew. Haya, Hoe, Yihie, which means he was, he is, and he will be. I will be what I will be. He was, he is, and he will be. There's the connection, and it's the only name that has this deep, deep meaning of being the eternal, timeless, infinite. There's only one name that stands for the greatness of our Elohim, and that is Yehovah. None of the other names fit the bill. They're actually fake Hebrew names that don't work. The name of Elohim never can begin with Yah. It doesn't work. That is a whole other subject in itself. But Yah, only by itself, when you're saying Hallelujah, Yah by itself, that's okay. But if you're saying the full name, Yah is just a brief, short, poetic form of the full name, Yehovah. So, Yah by itself works when you want to say Yahweh or Yahuwah or all these other fake names. It's not correct. It's not proper Hebrew. I don't care what they say. No. Exodus Shemot chapter 3 is trying to tell you what his name is and what it means and what's the connection. It's called Hebrewism. In Hebrew, there are many names, and you'll see this throughout Tanakh once you start learning Hebrew, that there's this poetic flow. Adam, Adama, Adam. Because he will till the soil. Adama. You know, all these names have poetic moon. And that's what God is telling you in Exodus chapter 3. I will be what I will be. My name means he was, he is, and he will be. Eternal, timeless, and infinite. Anyways, let's keep going. Also, the bogus claim that you'll hear as well is that the vowels used for, for example, the English term Jehovah was the vowels for Adonai. This is complete stupidity that is just the most annoying thing I constantly get all the time. Adonai is A-O-A. -A. That's not the vowels of Yehovah. It's E-O-A. 
So that is just ridiculous, and let's just kick that aside because it's so loony. Um, that's the real meaning of why the name is Yehovah. I pronounced Yehovah. So let's keep going. What is the proof in Tanakh that the name is not forbidden and not to be banned? Let's go start with Ruth chapter 2, verse 4. I'm sorry. Let's actually begin with Exodus chapter 3, verse 16, where he says, This is my name forever and my mention for all generations. That means God is saying this is for all time, not just temporal, not until it's banned hundreds of years later. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 27, the priestly blessing. The priestly blessing contained the name of Elohim. And it says, if you're not sure about that, if you want to con you know, contradict what it's saying, if you read verse 27, the last phrases say, And you will place my name, Shem, on the children of Israel, and I will come to them and bless them. Place my name, not my title, not the tradition, my name. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 2. And when David made his peace offering, the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Elohim. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. You shall fear Yehovah your Elohim, and you shall swear by his name. Now, it doesn't say his title, his qualities, or about his name. No, you shall swear by his name. And Elohim told you in Exodus, this is my name forever. What name? Yehovah. He did not give a title to Moshe. He gave his name. Yes, it is a name. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 5. For Yehovah your Elohim has chosen him out of all the tribes to stand to minister in the name of Yehovah. Him and his sons forever. To declaring the name of Yehovah, we must stand up against the ban and tell the peoples of the earth, when they come to us with their idolatry, this is Elohim. Yehovah is our Elohim. There is no other Elohim but him. He is not a trinity. He is one. His name is Yehovah for a reason. Like I said, the meaning behind his name. He was. He is. He will be. He is the eternal there is no other name that describes so perfectly the creator of all things. In Joshua chapter 9, verses 8 through 9, it says, And they, the Hivites, said unto Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where have you come from? And they said to him, From very far away country. Your servants are coming because, listen carefully, read it for yourselves. Because of the name of Yehovah, your Elohim. This is, quote, this is what they told Joshua. This is not a, a somebody speaking about what might have happened or how it happened. No, this is a quote. The Hivites are saying, Because of the name of Yehovah, your Elohim. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. But again, they mention his name. These are the nations, the Hivites. They didn't say his title. They didn't just say of your Elohim. It's, they said his name. Where would they come up with that idea? Why would the nations come to the Jewish people and tell them, we heard about your God, Yehovah? How would they know his name? If the Jewish people banned his name and didn't use it. It's one thing if the Jewish people are saying it in Tanakh. You can make excuses for that. But if the nations are coming from other places and saying, We have heard of your Elohim, Yehovah. And that's why we are here. How would they know his name? It just doesn't work. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 16 and now speaking about the nations. If they, the nations, learn the ways of my people, Israel, 
and swear by my name. Now, it's not talking about any Tom, Dick, or Harry, not just any random Gentile that just comes around and thinks he could just pronounce the name. No, no, no. Don't get me, tw- don't get my words twisted. I'm not saying that. I'm saying those who are seriously, seriously considering following Yehovah by keeping his Torah, keeping the mitzvot, and being true to Yehovah, because if you use his name, like I said before, in blasphemy and you're not serious, you are violating that forbidden command not to use his name in vain. There is no forgiveness for that. So do not take my words for granted. This is not speaking about any Tom, Dick, or Harry. I'm not saying that because there are some Karaites that are going to be like, what are you talking about? You can't just tell everyone that everybody's free to say that. I'm not saying that. So pay attention very clearly. These are for the haters who come to my videos and prejudge me. I'm not saying that any Tom, Dick, or Harry can just go ahead and just start, woohoo, I'm going to start saying the name. That's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. I am talking about the serious converts who want to follow the way of Yehovah and to his Torah and that are serious. That's what I'm talking about. Now it says, again, Jeremiah chapter 12 or 16. This is what I'm speaking about, the serious ones. And if they, the nations, learn the ways of my people Israel and swear by my name, if that's not enough by saying that, he tells you how to swear by his name. He says, as Yehovah lives, that's how you swear. Even as they once taught my people to swear by Baal, the name of their God, Master, like the Lord, then they will be established among my people. You see what I'm saying? Isaiah 42, verse 8. Yehovah's own words. His own words. He says, I am Yehovah. He doesn't say, I am. It's none of your business who I am. I am Elohim. You don't need to know my name. It's none of your business. You have no business speaking my name. He doesn't say that. He says very clearly, I am Yehovah. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another. That's the words of Elohim. Not my words. It's not my ideas. I'm not inventing these passages. It's exactly what it says in the text. Our Elohim, our creator, is telling us for us to read and study in the Hebrew, I am Yehovah. That is my name. He doesn't say this is one of my names. He says this is my name. So anyone who says that God has many names Reject it immediately. I don't care how high you are. I don't care if you think you're a hakam. I don't care if you think you're a great rabbi. You're going against the words of Elohim here. And I stand by truth. And I will continue to teach truth whether someone likes it or does not. I'm going to follow the truth. And that's what I'm teaching. I teach the truth. Whether you like me or you don't. I'm going to teach the truth. And I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm, I stand with a clear conscience about that. God is telling you himself, that is my name. Not one of my names, not a portion, my title. No, this is my name, period. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. Daniel says, blessed be the name, not names, the name of Elohim. For wisdom and mightiness are his alone. Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. I pray to Yehovah my Elohim and make confession saying, and I quote, Yehovah, the great and awesome Elohim. Now, why would he say this? Why would he write this down for all of us to read? Is this teaching us that the name is banned? Why didn't Daniel say Hashem? Why didn't he say the Lord? He doesn't say that. He says the name. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that everyone... Who calls on the name of Yehovah. Now again, I'm not talking about any random person who is not serious can do this. I'm not saying that. I'm saying those who are serious about committing to Torah and Yehovah. Let's not get it twisted. They shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape. As Yehovah has said, and among the survivors. Hosea chapter 12, verse 5. Yehovah, Elohim of hosts. Yehovah is his eternal name. Right there. Not one of his names, his name, period. 
Psalms 18, verse 49. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, Yehovah, among the nations and sing praises to your name. Not your names, not your titles, to your name. Now, another point I want to make, because I get this again, when I make videos about the name, I get people saying, well, is it a sin? Are you actually saying, are you going to contradict? No, I'm not saying that you can't use Elohim or the other titles in the book. I'm not saying that. I'm saying do not replace the Tetragrammaton YHWH. Do not replace it with a title if it's there in Scripture. That's the name of Elohim, and that's what he put there for us to know and to speak and to keep in our hearts. In everything we do, his name must be on our lips always. It's the breath of life, Yehoah. It's everything. It's everything. So, let's keep going here. Psalms chapter 20, verse 1 and verse 7. Yehoah, hear you in the day of trouble. When is trouble for Israel? Are they in trouble now? Yes, they are. Israel is in trouble. The name of the Elohim of Jacob defend you. Now, how is that going to happen when nobody's speaking the name? Everybody's calling it a title that is not his name. He's not going to defend them. He's not going to turn his face to Israel until they wake up. Some trust in chariots. Listen carefully. This is in verse 7 of Psalms chapter 20. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But we, Israel will remember the name, again, not names, not titles, we will remember the name of Yehovah our Elohim. Is this happening? No. Too many cowards, too many people following traditions or kissing the rear ends of other groups because they're running the show, such as Orthodox Jews, and uh, of the elite I'm talking about. If Karaites want to be separated from among the groups, they have to stand up. But they can't because they're controlled. They can't do their own conversion still. Psalms 22, verse 22. I will declare your name to my brothers in the midst of... Of the congregation or the, 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 the community. In the midst of them, I will declare your name. It doesn't say, I will not speak your name. I will, I will not pronounce your name in front of the crowd. It says, I will declare your name to my brothers in the midst of them. Not in secret. Psalms 45 verse 17. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise you forever and ever. Your name, your name, your name. Psalm 79, verse 6, Pour out your wrath upon the heathen that have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. Psalms 91, verses 14 through 15, Because he has set his love upon me, meaning Yehoah speaking, he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Why is this? Why is Elohim going to do this? Listen carefully. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Those who speak his name, who trust in the name, keep his name in their hearts, and use it, and do not replace it or ban it. It's unholy. It's not the words of Elohim. It's the traditions of man. Psalms 105, verse 1 and verse 3. Give thanks to Yehovah. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. Glory is in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek him rejoice. Psalms 113, verses 1 through 3. Praise Yah. Praise you servants of Yehovah. Praise the name of Yehovah. Blessed be the name of Yehovah from this time until forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, Yehovah's name is is to be praised. It doesn't say Elohim is to be praised. His qualities, what he did, I'm not saying that that's not involved either. But the, the point I'm making is the, the statements in clear scriptures are saying the name is to be praised. The name. 
I mean, he just told you what that name is. He didn't say the names. He says the name. Psalms 124 verse 8, Our help is in the name of Yehovah who made the heavens and the earth. That's where the help is, in his name. We're going to read a few more verses here. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 43. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the nations of the earth may know your name and fear you. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 24. Then you call upon the name of your God, whichever that may be, and I will call on the name of Yehovah, the God who answers by fire. He is Elohim and no other. Psalms 34, verse 3. Oh, magnify Yehovah with me, you people, and let us exalt his name forever. Period. Not temporarily, not until somebody bans the name. Isaiah 64, verse 7. So that you think it's not just all poetic stuff in Psalms. It's not. It's all over. Isaiah 64, verse 7. And there is none... None that call upon your name, that stirs up himself to grab hold of you. For you have hid your face from us. He has hid his face from Israel. It's the truth. I'm not lying. It's the truth. And have consumed us because of our sin. Isaiah 66, verse 5, for those of you who would be against this video, who will talk against me for saying this, even among my own brethren. Hear the word of Yehovah, you that tremble at his word, you brothers that hated your brothers, that hated you for my name's sake, they shall be ashamed. This is why I do not care if you don't like my message or what I teach. I teach the truth. Whether you like me or you don't, I don't care. I'm not here to gain popularity. I'm here to help. And finally, Psalm chapter 83, verse 18, that they may know that you, whose name is Yehovah, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Amen. I will follow truth. What will you follow? <laughs>